more than half a century ago, precisely in the early hours of January 15, 1966, Major Emmanuel Ifeajuna, Major Chuku Makaduna Nzogu, Major Chris Anuforo, Major Adewale Ademoyega, Major Timothy Nwatuegu, Major Humphrey Chukuka, Captain Emmanuel Nwabosi, Captain Ben Bullier, Captain Donatus Okafo, Second Lieutenant G. Uwefuru, and a handful of other junior army officers of the Nigerian army, who happened to be predominantly from the eastern region, effected a violent rebellion and bloody mutiny. Since then, there have been about 11 military coups in Nigeria. Five were successful, three were not successful but resulted in the serious loss of lives, while about three of the coups were allegedly planned but never actually materialized on the ground. In one of these cases, the government of General Ibrahim Badamusi Babangida actually executed Mamman Vasa and others who were alleged to have planned the overthrow of his government. We have given extensive coverage of all these coups on this channel. Please see the playlist in the card here. In this video, we will explain how it all began on January 15, 1966 when junior officers of the Nigerian army took arms against the state in what many considered as the genesis of all evil done by the military. Hello, 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 Hisplast. Welcome to this episode on Hispo Media. Gabriel here. If you are new here, consider subscribing to this channel and book the like button on this video. Thank you. By the time a desperate group of junior officers launched the first coup attempt in January 1966, the officers were still politically inexperienced and had yet to master the art of coup planning and execution. By the time they stopped shooting, no less than 22 prominent leaders, politicians and senior army officers including Sir Tafar Balewa, the Prime Minister, Sir Amadou Bello, the Premier of the Northern Region and his wife, Hafsat, Chief S. L. Akintola, the Premier of the Western Region, Chief Festus Okotiebo, the Minister of Finance, Brigadier Samuel Ademulegun, Commander of the 1st Brigade Kaduna and his wife Latifat, Brigadier Zakaria Maimalari, Commander of the 2nd Brigade Lagos, Lieutenant Colonel James Yakubu Palm, the Adjutant of the Nigerian Army, Colonel Raf Shodeinde, Head of the Nigerian Military Training College, Lieutenant Colonel Abogulagema, Commander of the 4th Battalion Ibadan, Colonel Ko Mohammed, Chief of Staff Army, Lieutenant Colonel Onegwe, Quartermaster General and others were murdered. However, the inexperience of the plotters would explain why they were unable to seize state power. Instead, Major General Johnson Thomas Aguironsi, the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, became Nigeria's first military ruler. The use of soldiers to quell unrest, such as the riot among the chief people of the Lower Northern Region, calls for the military to supervise the 1964 elections were among the remote cause of the coup. Just like today, politicians were all condemned by Nigerians. Many Northerners, therefore, saw the January 1966 coup as being targeted at the North and an attempt by the Igbo people of the East to dominate the Federation. Six months later, a successful counter-coup led by Northern soldiers demonstrated the extent to which soldiers had become politicians in uniform. The 1966 Nigerian counter-coup, also known as the July Rematch, was the second of several military coups in Nigeria. It was organized by Lieutenant Colonel Moritala Mohammed and a number of Northern military officers. You can find exclusive coverage of that coup in the link displayed here and in my description. However, the immediate reasons for the first coup were widespread disillusionment with corruption and nepotism on the part of politicians, as well as their inability to maintain law and order and ensure the safety of lives and property. This would explain why Nziogu and his collaborators were held as national heroes during the early stages of the coup. But the pattern of killings in the coup, however, gave it a partisan appearance. The Prime Minister, a Northerner, the Premier of the Northern Region and the highest ranking Northern Army officers were all killed. Only one Igbo officer was killed. The Premier of the Western Region, who was closely allied with the NPC, was also assassinated. General Ironsi, an Igbo who outmaneuvered the plotters, became the Commander-in-Chief. His policies and actions did little to allay fears of Igbo domination. 
He did not prosecute the coup plotters as northern leaders demanded, and he appointed Igbos to sensitive government positions. Against all advice, Ironsi issued Decree No. 34 of 1966, which abolished the federal system and replaced it with a unitary system. He claimed that the military could only govern in this manner. Given the already tense situation, this action intensified northern fears. Because the north was less developed than the south, a unitary system could easily result in the south taking over control of everything, as one northern representative put it. The counter coup of July 1966 occurred at the height of northern opposition to unitarism. The majority of top-ranking Igbo officers, including Ironsi, were killed, and the status quo of northern domination was restored. In the weeks leading up to the coup, Major Kaduna Nziogu conducted reconnaissance on Amado Bello's Kaduna mansion. Nziogu frequently led his men in the nighttime training exercise known as Exercise Damisa, which was actually a drill for a military coup. Brigadier Samuel Ademulegun, commander of the 2nd Brigade, became irritated with the nighttime exercises and reprimanded Nziogu over the phone to keep the exercise a safe distance from Bello's mansion. Although Ademulegu complained about the noise, he had no idea what the exercise was all about. Nziogu had so little control over his troops that he had to conscript young officers from the Nigerian Military Training College in Kaduna. Nziogu decided to turn exercise Damisa into a complete military coup in the early hours of January 15, 1966. He would lead his men to a bush near the mansion gates and revealed their true mission. Nziogu and his men blew open the gates of the mansion and searched the property for Amadou Bello. They discovered him hiding with his wives. After losing his temper over his initial failure to locate him, Bello was shot as was one of his wives who attempted to protect him with her body. Bello's loyal bodyguard arrived with a bow and arrow to defend his boss, but was also shot. Major Timothy Nwatoegu, Nziogu's co-conspirator, personally led a detachment of the soldiers to Ademulegun's house. Nwatoegu walked up to the brigadier's room where he lay beside his wife. When Ademulegun saw Nwatoegu enter the room, he exclaimed, Timothy, what the hell are you doing here? Nwatoegu informed Ademulegun that he was under arrest. As Ademulegun reached for the drawer beside his bed, Nwatoegu shot him dead along with his wife. Who was lying beside him. Colonel Ralph Shodeinde, the head of the Nigerian Military Training College, was assassinated, but the manner of his death is still unclear. According to his wife, though, he was shot by several soldiers, including Major Nziogu and Major Nwatoegu. Other accounts claim that a grenade was thrown at him. It is unclear, however, whether Nziogu was involved in Shodeinde's death because he was presumably preoccupied at the time with killing Amadou Bello. According to most accounts, Mwatoegu is responsible for the death of Shodeinde. The same Mwatoegu who shot both Shodeinde and Ademulegu, as well as his wife, kidnapped but did not harm Northern Region Governor Kashim Ibrahim. When he was released, Ibrahim stated that the man who kidnapped him treated him with utmost respect. Hassan Katsina commander of the 2nd Real Squadron in Kaduna was unarmed during the coup as well. Katsina ran into Nziogu shortly before the coup began. It is thought that the two men's conversation saved Katsina's life because Nziogu's familiarity with Katsina's family led him to exclude Katsina from the coup out of empathy. When the two men met again shortly after the coup, Nziogu directly asked him, are you with us or against us? When Katsina noticed Nziogu was holding a gun, he wisely replied, You know, I am with you. Major Emmanuel E. Fiajuna and some lieutenants from the 2nd Brigade headquarters arrived at Prime Minister Abubakar Tafawa Balewa's residence at around 2 a.m. They overpowered but did not kill the police officer stationed nearby. E. Fiajuna then kicked down the Prime Minister's bedroom door before dragging him out at gunpoint. Elsewhere in Lagos, Major Don Okafo attempted to apprehend Brigadier Zakaria Mai Malari, but he escaped by jumping over the wall behind his house. He came across a car of his brigade major Emmanuel Ifeajuna while fleeing on foot. 
My Mallory recognized Ifia Juna but had no idea he was also involved in the coup plot. My Mallory waved down the car, mistakenly believing Ifia Juna could be trusted, and he was promptly shot by Ifia Juna. Lieutenant Colonel Abogo Lageman, the commanding officer of the Ibadan Base Foot Battalion, was a guest at the Ikoyi Hotel on the night of the coup. When Ifia Juna arrived at the hotel, he used a gun to force the desk clerk to inform Lagema that he had a phone call. When Lagema came out of his room, Ifia Juna and a subaltern emerged from their enclosure in the corridor and shot him dead. A phone call from Lieutenant Colonel James Yakubu Pam alerted the Army's GOC, Johnson Thomas Aguironsi, to the coup. Pam was abducted from his home and shot dead by Major Chris Anuforo shortly after finishing his phone call with Ironsi. Lieutenant Colonel Ato Onegwe, the only Igbo officer killed in the coup, was shot by Anuforo because he was known to be close to Brigadier Mai Malari and had to be silenced to prevent him from raising the alarm. Balewa, Colonel Kor Mohammed, and Minister of Finance Festus Okotiebo were kidnapped and later murdered. Elsewhere in Ibadan, the Western Region Premier Chief Samuel Ladoke Akintola had been warned that soldiers were on their way to arrest him. Akintola had rumored of a coup and traveled to Kaduna to warn Northern Region Premier Amadu Belu. He returned to Ibadan and armed himself with a rifle after failing to elicit any urgency in Belu. The plotters first arrested his deputy, Chief Remy Fani Kayude. Kayude's wife informed Akintola of his arrest after it happened. A detachment of soldiers led by Captain Emmanuel Nwoboshi arrived at Akintola's house shortly after. When Akintola saw the soldiers, he opened fire, injuring several of them, including Captain Nwoboshi. After fighting for his life and engaging the soldiers in a gunfight, Akintola was shot dead by Nwoboshi's men. The aftermath caused by the murder of other officers alerted Ironsi to the coup and he was able to rally troops who assisted him in putting down the coup. On his way to start crushing the coup, Ironsi came across a checkpoint manned by junior officers involved in the coup. Ironsi simply stepped out of his vehicle and yelled, Get out of my way! They promptly obeyed and Ironsi continued his journey. When it became clear that the coup would fail, Nziogu handed over Northern Region control to Ironsi's appointed designee, Hassan Katsina, before being escorted to Lagos by Lieutenant Colonel Conrad Nwowo, where he surrendered to Ironsi. Except for Ife Ajuna, who had fled to Ghana, the coup leaders were arrested. The surviving members of the federal cabinet handed over power to Ironsi, who suspended several provisions of the constitution, banned all political parties, and established a new military government with a Supreme Military Council. With Ironsi at the helm of affairs and the growing fears of Igbo domination, Northerners began to plan for the next line of action. Their fears became more pronounced when Ironsi issued a unification decree number 34 of May 1966 and would lead to the counter coup of July 29, 1966, also known as the July Remarch. Click this video here for details on how Agui Ronsi was killed in the Northern Counter Coup or here for our entire coup playlist. Don't forget to book the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.